Hello and welcome everybody. Today we'll be going over Laravel in depth to prepare ourselves for the certification exam. In this video, we will be discussing the request lifecycle. While it is true that you don't need to understand the request lifecycle to be able to use Laravel, it does give you a bit more confidence while using it as well as potentially help you resolve any issues or extend the framework to your liking. As we're going through each step, I would highly recommend starting a new Laravel project and going through the files with me. All right, having said that, let's open up the terminal and create a new project. And now let's CD into that project and open it up in the code editor. Before we take an in-depth look at the code, let's get a brief overview of the lifecycle itself. The lifecycle starts and ends with one person, the user. In most cases, this will simply be the user visiting a page on the website. This will then trigger the whole process. The request will then go to the web server the server will then auto load dependencies from Composer. It will then bootstrap the application, register and boot the service providers, and they will then dispatch the request to the router. Then in most cases, the router will push these requests to the controller where all the logic is. And finally, the controller will bring the information along with the views in the form of a page to the user, completing the cycle. All right, now let's check out the code to see how this functions. As we just stated, the whole process begins with a request to the web server, which out of the box, Laravel comes with Apache configurations. As we can see here in the public folder, we have htaccess file. But note that the application can be configured uh, with Nginx or any other sort of server uh, if you need to. The web server then directs traffic to the index.php file uh, right here in the public directory. Now let's take a closer look here. We have a few things. Uh, we have a lot of start, then we'll get into the autoloader bootstrapping uh, and creating the kernel in a little bit, but I'd like just to take a second to take a, a look at this uh, right here. A lot of us start uh, and what this does, it is actually a timestamp of whenever index.php is called. Uh, and actually we can use that if we go to routes, web.php, we can use that here. So that was what we had before, right? Laravel start. Uh, and then let's create something. I'll call it Laravel end. And let's uh, maybe echo that. Uh, so that'll be Laravel oops, start, oh, no. Laravel end, subtract Laravel start. Uh, and we should get uh, how long it takes for the framework to go through everything uh, and spit back out uh, the response. And we can see that in the browser. Uh, maybe I'll just die right there. Um, all right, and let's start up uh, the server with PHP artisan serve and take a look at this in the browser. All right, we can see here we have 0 0.15. What does that mean? Well, it's 0 0.15 five microseconds. Uh, and if you're unfamiliar with a microsecond, there are one million microseconds in one second. Uh, so to say the very least, uh, the framework itself is pretty fast. Going in the index.php file. Next up, we have autoload.php, uh, which is in the vendor folder. This is the file that we use to register the autoloader. Uh, so this automatically registers packages brought in to our application through Composer. And let's take a further look at that. So that is in uh, within the vendor folder. And then down here at the bottom, we have autoload.php. And we can see that it requires the real autoloader uh, here at the top, uh, which is in the Composer folder uh, within the vendor folder. It then runs the get loader function within this particular class. All right, now let's go ahead and check that out. Um, so we'll be in the vendor folder under composer, uh, and then we have autoload real. 
So within this class, we are going to be running the get loader function. This will do a lot of the magic in the background to pull in the packages from Composer. Uh, but let's take a look at uh, maybe a few uh, interesting points here. Uh, here we can see that if we're running uh, a version of PHP uh, above 5.06, then this will become true. So if this is true, then we will uh, just require the static autoloader. Otherwise, uh, it'll pull in the namespaces, PSR4 uh, and class map. Um, and so you will most likely be running a version of PHP above 5.06. It'll probably be uh, even higher than seven, but let's go ahead uh, and take a look here. So at least locally, I'm running uh, 7.3.11. Uh, so we'll definitely be loading the static autoloader. Uh, and let's go take a further look at that. Here is a nice array of all the packages that we've brought in through Composer that will be autoloaded. We can see a bunch of them are from Symfony. We've got Swift Mailer, we've got Guzzle and a lot of uh, and some of the helper functions uh, from Laravel. Uh, this goes on for quite a while. So I won't bore you with examining each one, but just know that we're pulling them all in from here. All right, now let's go back to index.php uh, in the public folder. There we go. So this brings us to our next step which is bootstrapping the application. Uh, and we'll be doing that in the app.php file, uh, which resides in the bootstrap folder. So let's go ahead and check that out. Well, first of all, it creates the application uh, itself to which the components will be connected later on. It then binds the HTTP console and debug interfaces to the container. Uh, and finally, it returns the app so that we can use it. Now let's go back to the index.php file uh, in the public folder. And we can see here how with the kernel, we'll use the handle method uh, to handle HTTP requests and respond to the user. So we'll handle them right here uh, and then we'll send our response. And then finally, we'll terminate the kernel. And just uh, as a side note, we actually have two kernels. We have the HTTP kernel, uh, as well as the console kernel. And these are found in app uh, HTTP kernel right here for obviously the HTTP kernel. Uh, and then the console kernel uh, is right here. So as part of bootstrapping the application, the service providers will be loaded and we'll see them here in the uh, app.php file within the config folder. Uh, and here we have a lot of different configurations at the top, uh, such as application name, we have the environment, debug mode, uh, etc. But down here below, where are we? Right here, we have uh, an array of the service providers that we have auto loaded. Um, so we have the service providers from the Laravel framework itself, as well as the application service providers. Uh, and then uh, if you'd like to add any external packages, you would place those service providers here as well uh, so that they would be bootstrapped to your application. If we take a look here under the application service providers, at the very bottom, we have the root service provider, which brings us to our next step, which is dispatching requests to the router. So let's go ahead and go into the route service provider for a second. And so this is within app providers, uh, route service provider. Uh, and here we can see that it extends the service provider, uh, has a boot right here where it boots up uh, and then it has the map function. It will take care of the routing. So we have two important functions here. Uh, for what we're looking for, which are the map web routes, uh, which will take care of the usual web traffic, as well as the map API routes, which will take care of the API calls. We can see that the former, so map web routes right here, uh, is taken care of with the web.php 
file within the routes folder uh, and it has the web middleware whereas the uh, API calls uh, they go into the uh, map API routes uh, which will be taken care of the api.php file within the same routes folder. Uh, and note here that it has the API middleware. So these will have uh, slightly different configurations with the, the web routes having CSRF protection, uh, et cetera. Uh, and so we'll get into, actually we'll get into middleware a little bit later on, uh, but just note that they will have different configurations. So since we're looking at web requests, uh, let's take a look at the web dot php file so that is within routes web dot php now that we're back here uh, let's go ahead and clean up the file as it was before get that out of the way okay so this is how it was before yeah and as you can see that it actually doesn't use any controller at all that's because the logic is simple enough to just put inside of a function within the web router itself so Okay, if your application is this simple, then yeah, you don't need a controller. Uh, however, most applications are going to be a lot more complex than this and a controller will help uh, you control that logic. All right, so enough talk. Let's go ahead and make a controller so that we can link to it. All right, so let's open up the terminal, enter the command php artisan make controller. So this is how you would uh, generally make a controller, then you have the name after it. Let's just go with test controller uh, since this is just a test. Um, and then actually I'll add a flag here and I'll explain why uh, in a little bit. It's the resource flag. Uh, it's essentially for CRUD operations. Controller created successfully. Where does that go? Well, it actually goes uh, within app, uh, HTTP controllers, test controller. Here is the controller that we added on. And so you may have been wondering, why did I add the resource flag? Uh, well, this, this is the reason. So if you didn't add the resource flag, uh, the control would end up just like this with no methods in the class. However, we will often use these methods to create a general CRUD operation. In this case, we'll be using the index method to show the welcome view. So let's go back here uh, and we'll write the route again, uh, this time using or linking uh, to the controller. So we go route get again. Oops. So we'll have it get the, the main index. Uh, and instead of putting in a function here, we will refer back to the test controller uh, and then that index function right there. So uh, this will actually do the same thing as this if within the test controller we just need to use um, Laravel's view helper function to show this welcome page. And you may be wondering where does this welcome page come from? Well, uh, let's close this. It comes from resources, views, uh, and then we have welcome.blade.php. Uh, and so it'll pull in this view uh, and serve that up. All right, and just uh, to test this, make sure it is all working, uh, let's go ahead and uh, pull up a server. So uh, PHP artisan serve. And here is that main application, right? Uh, this is what the welcome uh, page looks like. So uh, I can change this. Let's just say I change the background, uh, refresh here. And we can see that this welcome page has changed as well. So there we have it. The cycle has come full circle and now it's back to the user. Note that the same could have been done for API requests uh, and those would be handled with the API router and controller, but the functionality uh, is really all the same as just dealt with those, those different files. So this is Laravel's request lifecycle in a nutshell. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to write them in the comment section below. And if you're planning on taking the certification exam, uh, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. All right. Thanks a lot, everybody. Take care.